Good morning. I'm Bruce Reese, a member here at Surfside United Methodist Church, and it is a real joy and a privilege to be able to be participating in the service this morning. I appreciate the band as they always prepare our minds and our hearts for the message that we are about to receive. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time together where we join in worshiping you and praising your name. And as we do, Lord, may it draw us closer to you. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I want to start the message this morning with a question. And the question is, going somewhere? One of the possible answers to that would be, of course, everybody is going somewhere. Many of us after the service today will be going home. Some may go to our favorite restaurant or a friend's home. But for the most part, we are going to a place that is familiar to us, a place that we've been before. So there's really no need to get any help with directions to reach the destination. But what if we were going to an unfamiliar place, a place we had never been before? Think for a moment about a vacation that you took to an unfamiliar place. Chances are you experienced excitement and anticipation leading up to the vacation. Maybe you had to save some money to pay for it. Uh, bought some clothes that were appropriate for the location. And with all the preparation and excitement that went in to preparing for that vacation, it's likely that you would have spent some time getting some directional or navigational help to ensure that you arrive at your destination. Over the years, people have used a lot of different resources to help them get to where they wanted to be. Uh, early on, the choices were very few. Basically, you had to find somebody who had already been there that hopefully had a good enough memory that could tell you how to get there. And then eventually, maps were created. And so now we had these maps, and assuming that you or somebody that was with you knew how to read one of these, this would do a pretty good job of getting you close to your destination. And then, in 1937, AAA invented the best thing since sliced bread. It was called the trip ticket. Did anybody here know what a trip ticket is? Does anybody know what a trip ticket is? Okay, well, not alone. I was, I was afraid I might be alone. I got some company, but I think we're still in the minority. Well, a trip ticket is what it looked like. Now, this was a very exciting thing because what you could do as you went on your journey, you would page through this trip ticket, and it would tell you so much more information than you could possibly get from just a map. It would tell you a little bit about the area you were going through. If there was construction, it would tell you a little bit about the detour that you might want to take to get around it. Now, I'm told that this was so popular that some people would actually get a trip ticket to a destination they really knew how to get to, only because they wanted to flip the pages along the way. And maybe that was one of you. Or it could have been me. Then in around 1989, the first GPS navigational device for personal use was created. And this is what it looked like. It's a small little thing. You would put this in your car, 
plug it in, enter the data, it would give you a map, some directions, and even talk to you a little bit. This was really exciting. This was amazing technology, well, at least in its day. Today, however, most people only use the GPS on their phone to get to where they need to be. And I suspect that there are some people here that have only ever used this device to get to where you needed to go. However, the most advanced, reliable, complete, and valuable GPS is actually the oldest one. And this is it, the Bible. This is the most advanced because it requires no external power, no power cord, no battery. It relies solely on the internal power of the Holy Spirit. And it requires no updates. It's advanced because of the things it doesn't need. It's reliable because it always leads you to the right place, unlike some of the devices of today. It's the most complete because it not only tells you the right way to go, it warns you of all the wrong ways not to go. And it's the most valuable because it leads you to the most important destination, and that is heaven. However, this GPS does not stand for Global Positioning System. Rather, it stands for God's Plan Salvation. So now that we know that, why don't we take a look and see what this physical GPS has to say about how we get to heaven. Well, as we start our journey, we see a caution sign. And it says, enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the road is easy that leads to destruction, and there are many who take it. So the very first thing we know is you do not accidentally stumble onto the road to heaven. Rather, it is an intentional step that one must take to get on that road. So now that we have this caution, and we continue the journey, we see another sign. This sign says, For God so loved the world that he gave us his only Son, that whoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. It's John 3, 16, is a very familiar one to us. So, it talks about eternal life, and since we know that eternal life is in heaven, then this tells us that God's Son has something to do with us getting to heaven. So, we now have this piece of information, and we continue on the journey, and we see another one. This one, Jesus says, I am the way, and the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And that's in John 14, 6. Okay. So now, it's very clear that Jesus is the one and only way to the Father. The Father is in heaven, therefore Jesus is the one and only way to heaven. But now it gets us thinking a minute, because now if we go back to that first sign, it says, whoever believeth in him. And then, well, how do we believe? How do we believe in Jesus? Well, Fortunately, our GPS not only gives us directional signs, it gives us additional explanation. And so we go a little further and we see this other sign. It says, and this is in 
Romans 10, 9. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that he was raised from the dead, you shall be saved. And being saved is what gives you the reservation in heaven. And so now we know what it means to believe in Jesus. Well, now we're starting to feel like we're on the right road. We're seeing signs, feeling pretty good. And we go a little bit further, and we see another sign. This one causes us to slow down because it's a little confusing, just as it was for Nicodemus in Jesus' day. This one says, Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Oh, born again. Yeah. What does that really mean? What do Once again, our GPS not only gives us direction, it gives us explanations. And so we see another sign that helps us understand what is meant by that. And this is found in 2 Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation, the old has passed away, and the new has come. So this born again, this is a spiritual birth. So now, it feels like we're really headed in the right direction. And so if you, if you take all of that and you sort of put it together in the biblical Cliff Notes version of getting to heaven, it says, God sent his son Jesus to pave the way. Jesus tells us he is the way. We need to believe in Jesus to find the way. And the way that we do that is we accept Jesus as Lord and Savior of our life. And when we do, we become a new creation. And when we become a new creation, we have a reservation in heaven. So, do not worry about arriving and seeing a no vacancy sign. Because, in John 14, 2, in John 14, 2, it says, In my Father's house, there are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? Okay, so now we're starting to feel pretty good because we're feeling like we're on the road to heaven. Alright? As the lyrics in a Kenny Chesney song of several years ago says, everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to go now. So it raises another question. What difference does it make if I am on the road to heaven, what difference does it make in my life today? The answer to that is all the difference in the world. Because fortunately, our GPS understands that the journey, just as the destination, is very important. And it also tells us that when we become a new creation in Christ and live in the will of God, we are heirs to God's promises. And these are life-changing promises that make a difference today. Have you ever had a day where you have felt lonely or unloved? If so, here are some signs to help you deal with that situation. It says, neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And in, in Hebrews 13, 5, it says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. 
God promises us inseparable love and constant companionship. So whether today is the best day of your life, the most difficult day, or anywhere in between, traveling this day with God is always better than traveling alone. Have you ever worried about anything? Have you ever been anxious, felt stressed? Here is a sign that will help you know that help is available. It is found in Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Do not worry about anything, but in everything. Through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your request known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. When you worry, although the Bible tells us not to, most of us at some point in time end up worrying about something. And it is in the midst of that worry that we can experience the peace of God. And it passes all understanding because without God you could never experience this type of peace in the midst of worry. This is a supernatural peace only available. Well, have you ever felt regret, guilt, or shame? These can be some of the most difficult days of our lives. And when we find ourselves in the midst of despair because of those, we can go to our GPS and be reassured by verses that have been provided says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all righteousness. As far as the east is from the west, he has removed our transgressions from us. And therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Only God can forgive our sins. Only God can forgive those things that we didn't do, that we should have done, and we did that we shouldn't have done. And it is in the midst of that forgiveness that the burden can be lifted from us and we can experience the forgiveness of God. Have you ever been tempted? to go down that wide road that leads to destruction rather than the narrow one that leads to heaven. Most of us, at some point in our life, has been tempted in some way. And it is good to know that God promises strength for us to overcome the temptation. And if we look at the next sign, it says, but the Lord is faithful, and he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteousness. And then in Psalm 46, 1, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present in time of help. The world is filled with lies and promises and deceit. But God promises in those times when temptation confronts us, he will give us the strength to overcome. And if you ever fear that you are in a situation where it is impossible to resist that temptation, know this, that with God, all things are possible. Knowing that each day of our journey towards heaven, these promises of God are available to us each and every day. 
So we never walk alone. We are never alone. When worry comes, peace is available. When temptation comes, he helps us overcome. And when we mess up, forgiveness is offered. These are the life-changing promises of God that makes all the difference in the world. So now let's look back to that vacation we talked about. Remember the excitement and the happiness that you experienced on those few days that you were there. These things pale in comparison to the lasting joy of the promises of God and the eternity that we spend in heaven. When my mother went to be home with the Lord, she left behind a lot of stuff for the rest of us to help us grow in our Christian faith. And I came across this one uh, recently, and it kind of fits with what we've been talking about here today. It says, will the road you are on get you like this? God. As it was said, uh, sung in one of the earlier songs this morning, there were words that said, Still, the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose God. And that is part of the promises of God. May the next time you hear the question being asked, going somewhere, may you know the certainty that you are on the road to heaven, standing on the promises of God. Let's pray. Gracious and loving Father, thank you for the gift of your Son that gives us abundant and eternal life. Set our hearts ablaze with desire to seek your will for our lives. Help us to be more Christ-like in all that we do. And may every step we take from this day forward lead us to the place that you have prepared for us. These things we ask in the name that is above all names, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.